Okay, so first of all, I'm going to calculate the average of all of the x values. Then I'm going to calculate the average of all of the y values. Then I need to count how many data points I have. So I'll just select the x column again. Then I need to calculate the square of the deviations for the x values. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the dev sq function and then select all of the x values. And then I need to do the same thing for the y values. Then I need to take the deviation of the y values and subtract the deviation of the x values. Then I need to calculate the covariance. So I'll use this function here. And then array 1 will be all of the x values and array 2 will be all of the y values. Then I need to do 2 times the covariance times by the number of data points that we have. And now I have everything that I need to calculate the slope and the intercept. So to calculate the slope, I am going to take the difference between the y and x deviations. And then I'm going to add the square root of the difference between the x and y deviations again. And we need to square this plus this number here. And we also need to square this. Then I need to put all of this into brackets so that I can divide it by this value here again. And that gets me the slope. Then in order to calculate the intercept, I need to take the average of the y values and subtract the average of the x values and multiply this by the slope and enter. And now I have the slope and the intercept. I want to plot this trend line. So I'm going to calculate the minimum of all of the x values and the maximum of all of the x values. And then we can use this equation here to calculate the y values. So this is the slope times by the x value plus the intercept. And I'll make this here an absolute cell reference and this here as well. So then I can drag the formula down and calculate the same thing for the x maximum. Now in this chart here, I have two trend lines. The blue one is the one automatically calculated in Excel, and Excel uses ordinary least squares regression to calculate this line. And that assumes that there's no uncertainty in the x values that they are your independent variable, and that all of the uncertainty is in the y values, and that is the dependent variable. And so this trend line tries to minimize the amount of vertical distance between the trend line and the data point. So it minimizes the distance in the y axis, but it doesn't take into account the distance in the horizontal direction, so the distance for the x axis. And this is fine if you don't have any uncertainty in your x values. For example, there, the time at which you collected a sample, because you know exactly when that is. But it might not be appropriate if you do have uncertainty in the x values, in which case you might want to use the total least squares regression. And this assumes that there's uncertainty in both the x values and the y values. So it tries to minimize the distance between the data point and the line in both the y axis and the x axis. So you end up with a slightly different trend line. Now there's a couple of functions that we have used here that you might not be familiar with. So we can have a look at these. First of all, we'll look at the dev sq function. And if I click on this, it will open up the help bar. And we can see that this function returns the sum of squares of deviations of data points from their sample mean. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the actual calculation that this function is doing. And we can recreate this. 
So we will take the x value here and we will minus the average of the x value. And then we need to put all of this into brackets and then square it and then double click to send that down. And then I can take the sum of all of these numbers. And you'll see that this number here is the same as this number here. So this is the calculation that this function is doing. And then the other function that we are using is the covariance one. And if I click on this, we can also see this in the help bar. And if we scroll down here, this is the calculation that this function is doing. And we can recreate this. I will delete this here and then we need to get rid of the squared part of this and then I'll add in a couple more columns and then we need to take the y value and minus the average of the y value and double click to send that down and then we need to multiply these numbers and then we will take the sum of all of these numbers and then we can take this and divide it by the number of data points that we have so 17 in our case and then we end up with this number here which is the same as this number here so this is the calculation that this function is doing now I have taken all of these formulas and I have put them together into one formula and I will leave a copy of this in the description. Okay, so in this video I have shown you how to calculate total least squares regression in Excel and that is everything.